Hello Terraria Enthusiasts, my name is James and today I want to go over the history of mobile exclusive content in Terraria and then I also want to give a defense for the reason why I feel like it shouldn't be removed moving on into the future. So to give a little bit of context for this video in case you're watching this in a couple of weeks, Relogic actually announced recently that it's going to remove a bunch of console exclusive items from the game and this includes things like like respired enemies, dragon armor, titan armor, and even the boss Okram. So as you guys may know, all of that content is actually held within mobile content too, and that also extends to the 3DS edition of the game. But if we can kind of look at that and think, hey, they're removing all that, they will probably remove that from the mobile edition in the future but that does leave behind a bunch of events that you can only get in mobile and 3DS. So that's what I wanna actually talk about today, just the seasonal events and whether they should stay or they should be removed. Now, before we begin, it's important to note that Relogic has not said they're removing the content from the game yet. They haven't mentioned it, they haven't had the discussion yet, so I'm hoping by making this video, I may convince them to keep it just a while longer because I would really like to see it left within the game. So let's begin with the history of seasonal events in Terraria. So they actually started cropping up about a year into the actual release of Terraria Mobile Edition, and they were actually found within hidden files within the game, and they were added patches way before they were actually implemented. So for example, the St. Patrick's Day stuff was actually added, and then it wasn't actually unlocked until an update, a few updates after. So they were clearly planning on making these way in advance. So the reason why they're actually there, and the reason why they're seasonal, is because of the way the App Store works and the Google Play Store works. So when you put your game onto the App Store and Google Play Store, the actual service will promote the game so that people will kind of look at it and then they can decide if they want to buy it and play it. So if a person buys and plays a mobile game, the App Store knows that they're probably only going to play it for a couple of days, maybe even a couple of weeks, because mobile gaming is all about pick up, play, put down. It's a lot more short term than a PC game. So in Terraria, we have Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Oktoberfest, Thanksgiving, and the unimplemented Chinese New Year. And all of these were added to try and be part of that seasonal bundle that the App Store and the Google Play Store try and promote. So for example, say Valentine's Day comes around, we now have a new icon for the game, so that, you know, once again just brings interest to the game because people are looking at it and going, hey, that's a little bit different, I wonder what's new. That's one of the best things you can actually do on a mobile app. You can actually just change the way the app looks. That will always pique interest. So after the first benefit of seasonal content, which is piquing a player's interest based on the actual app icon itself, you can also do the second benefit, which is actually appeal to new audiences who are scrolling through the App Store and the Google Play Store. So usually around the time of, say, Valentine's Day, at the top of the App Store, you'll see Valentine's Day Update, and it will have games like Fruit Ninja, Jetpack Joyride, and then also Terraria. And the way this actually works is by having all of the content already in Terraria, flipping a switch when the player's calendar changes, and then they just do a little push update which will just change the icon. And that's essentially how they do it. So my case for actually keeping the seasonal content is the fact that it's actually just harmless. All of the items and all of the pets it adds are just harmless. They're just items added for a fun little five minutes of gameplay and then they're forgotten about and they're only accessible through different points of the year. The good thing about all of them is they are themed that they're not something that a player would use all year long because they're actually not that great. But they do add to the promotion of the game. And I feel like keeping them just encourages that promotion even further. Terraria is one of the best mobile selling games of all time. And I really feel like seasonal content really promoted that. It made Terraria the top of the App Store and the Google Play Store many times throughout the year. And you know, in multiple years. This game has been out on mobile phones for quite a few years now. And so to remove it now 
would just seem a little bit weird. But what I think they should do is they should actually just add to it every year. So we have a Valentine's Day, we have a St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Oktoberfest, Thanksgiving. Maybe every year just add a new item. Just give something for players to be excited for. It only has to be small, but it really does feel like it gives you a reason to just go back and just give it another look, right? And so the funny thing is with Terraria Mobile Edition is because it's so kind of unbalanced and it's, you know, it's it's designed to be played for a few minutes and put down. The cool thing about seasonal events is that all of them are pretty easy and basic to get into. You know, you come into the game and new stuff is falling from the sky. Wow, okay. Pick it all up, fight a new boss, get some new stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's not hard, if you get me. Like, all of the stuff, you know, like Lepus and Turkle the Ungrateful, the two bosses that you can get, they're pretty easy bosses. I mean, you can fight them if you've already defeated Skeletron. So it gives players something cool to do if they haven't made it all the way through the game, but they do want to go back to the game to play a little bit more. I really feel like it should be kept. I mean, I know Lepus and Turkor don't actually fit the game's art style. They do look pretty out of place. They're pretty kooky, but I actually just kind of like that. I feel like that in itself is the charm of them. They are completely out of place, and I like that. I like that that is a thing. So please, please keep these, you know, if you if, if you would like to, of course, this is your game. Right, well anyway guys, that's gonna do it. It's a very brief history, right? Not much to this one, but it's because of the reason why that makes it interesting, if that makes sense. Now, if you're new around here and you like today's video, why not consider subscribing to the channel? By subscribing to Chippy Gaming, you're in the one-stop place for all your Terraria needs. If you did enjoy this video, please consider giving it a like rating. That really means a lot. So, that's it for today's video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.